So that's the reason that it worked out real well. And then, of course, with the crash, um, people as old as dirt didn't want to And the industry contracted, and I moved on to other things that, uh, that interest me. And when, when I discovered drones, um, because of my history, my personal experience, I knew right away. I just want to point out, I was before color TV. <laughs> I was before the fax machine. I was before the microwave oven. I was before personal computers. My, per, uh, my first cell phone was a gigantic thing that sat on, on my seat of my car and only lasted for a couple hours. Uh, I was, of course, before the internet. I was before RC aircraft. I was before cassette tapes. <laughs> uh, Don't say eight tracks. <laughs> <laughs> We had records, you know, vital. Any, anyway, um, I went, I've been going to the airfield in Sepulveda Basin in Van Nuys for 60 years. My dad used to take me there as a kid, and we built out of balsa wood and tissue paper and uh, dope. We made beautiful aircraft that we flew on a control line. My father would spend six months, he's the most beautiful thing you ever see. He'd go 30 seconds and <laughs> crash. Right at the field where I went uh, three or four years ago and started just meeting all the nicest people that you ever want to, they're geeks. I mean, they, they build everything, they, batteries, they, they're just like Todd. They, they, they got cut fingers and, <laughs> they, they, and they're very helpful to us. So it's a wonderful community uh, of people. I was just smitten, and I had the time, so I just read everything that I could possibly read about drones on Twitter and Facebook. You'd be surprised what, who's on Facebook in the drone industry. I mean, we got the top attorneys in the country, people that have retired, professors that in New York that have, females, as a matter of fact, that, that worked as regional counsel for the FAA for, for 35 years. We've got offices of the FAA that are there. I mean, the resources online are just, what a blessing. To have. And we're tied into people all over the globe. Um, it's just really, really fantastic. Um, all of this hardware stuff, nice, but it's gonna go away. It's all about the actual data, we know that. Um, 99 and 9 tenths percent of everybody out there that's buying these things, they're flying what I call gorillas. I mean, there was no, it, it, um, up, in, um, up until a couple of years ago, anything below, I would, the model aircraft at that Apollo airfield in Van Nuys, they've been flying there for 60 years. They're, they're tied into the AMA. Does anybody know about the AMA? Um, it's a, a hobby group for model aircraft. Um, it's definitely, worth uh, investigating and learning about, because they've been doing it longer than, they have been dealing with model aircraft, and that's what they call drones, and UAS and UAV and all that stuff. Before there were drones, it was called model aircraft. And they have more, they have unbelievable experience, knowledge, and expertise in that organization that the FAA just doesn't have. Um, in any event, <coughs> FAA's been struggling for at least the last eight years with how to deal with this. They're used to manned aircraft, and manned aircraft are highly, highly, highly regulated. I mean, every nut and bolt on that, that, that plane, and the maintenance of that plane, and the changing of each part of it, and all that, that's what they know. Now, I said the FAA, and everybody talks about the FAA. The FAA, is not just the FAA, it's a humongous bureaucracy. And it's got a head in Washington, D.C. with their own agenda and their own expertise. And then it has a place in Oklahoma City where they, uh, where they do registrations for aircraft. Everybody in the country has to go to Oklahoma City and currently a commercial you have to do it in, by snail mail with the two-part confidence form. Otherwise, you're dead in the water. 
can go on Facebook, they're all complaining. It took us four months to get the tail number, the number on the aircraft for commercial purposes. I see light challenges, and uh, last April I registered 10 with, the, with them. I was on the get up on the phone. They told me. That passes around. Yeah, sure. This is, this is how behind bureaucracy is. That's a form. That's a form. Paper form to fill out for every for Snail mail, snail mail to and from, no, no, no. Notarized. And, the, and I went to the, the FAA has another regional offices all over the country called the FISDO. Um, there's a lot of acronyms in this, in this business, uh, as in any uh, science and acronyms. Um, they are not in tune with Washington. They are not in tune with Oklahoma City. They just say, you want to register an aircraft? Whether it's a drone or whether it's a Boeing 747, the process is exactly the same. The paperwork is exactly the same. And you have to deal with Oklahoma City, and they give you a phone number at the FISDO, and they say, get up with, and call them only when they first open, because you're only going to get up on that first hour. <laughs> In the beginning, I was on the phone with them constantly. And then we, we actually sent in in one letter, we sent in for four tail numbers. And we saw that the, F the FAA took it, cast a check, and then assigned it to four different examiners. And those four different examiners, one for each aircraft, had different criteria. One of them gave us a tail number immediately with the same kind of paperwork. Uh, the next one wanted something different, a different, with one person, four aircraft, same paperwork, we filled it all out, and that was just a hint of what Washington is like, okay? Washington runs the same way, and the FISDOs run the same way. Each FISDO is a kingdom unto itself, and they're usually, a lot of them are ex-military, a lot of them are, um, they're all pilots, and they don't like drones. <laughs> they don't understand drones. They know nothing about drones. And I call them drones. Not UAV, not UAS, or not SUAS. Because the reason I do that, I'm not out to impress anybody with my knowledge or my you know, degrees or anything like that. That's what the public knows them at. And I know from my experience that that's going to be the de facto term forever amongst the public, amongst the broad audience that we're talking to. Yeah, scientists are going to call them different things. And, and different people have called them different things. And they're changing over time. And the FAA doesn't even call them the same thing, OK? The lawyers who, who uh, got the first 333s, the first uh, um, approvals, they were using the language of, of Washington. And when Washington granted them their permission to fly commercially, they went to the registration. And the registration people kicked back all their registration paperwork because they were using the language of the FAA in Washington and not the language of the FAA in Oklahoma City. It's really that bad. We back up. FAA is charged by statute with controlling the national airspace system. All of the skies, all over the United States, are controlled by one agency, the FAA. Not LA City, not the state of California, the FAA. However, and we spent a long time as counsel to, to a county um, government, those guys, even though they take an oath of office, that they're going to uphold the Constitution and the laws of the United States and the laws of the state and the laws of the county. They don't know what that means. And they get they want to get reelected. So if there's a hot topic like drones, they want to get in on the action because the media is going to, if they're going to pass a new law about drones, they're going to get all kinds of media attention, make their constituent happy. But they're not following federal law or the supremacy clause of or the preemption of, of federal statutes, they're just doing their little thing. And the way the law works, of course, 
They enact the law. The executive signs it in. Now the people in that county think that that's the law. Actually, it's not. Um, yeah, it is, and it's not. It's kind of if you get prosecuted under it, <laughs> and, you get, and you can afford a decent attorney, he's going to get blown away, and they're going to rely on the FAA. Can you imagine? You try to do science, you try to fly, you try to do anything like that, and every single little city, town, state, park jurisdiction has different flying rules. Well, FAA is, is applying the same principles, and the federal government is applying the same principles as manned aircraft. And they're very important to our economy and interstate commerce and international commerce. It has to be controlled by one source, the FAA. The city of LA hasn't figured that out. So what's, what do you think the solution is to that? Listen, the drones are no different than anything else. This has always been the case. It's how our democracy works. And that's what the courts are for. That's why we have three branches of government. And the solution, really, off the record, 99% of everybody is flying, quote unquote, gorilla. And anybody that I've ever dealt with on drones, I say, like, listen to Todd. Todd is, he's, he's the guru. Dan and Todd think they're unbelievable. You gotta fly safe. You don't wanna burn yourself, you don't wanna cut your fingers off, and that kind of stuff. That's really important, the safety part of it. Major important. He's, through experience, the guys that are doing this for the last five years, they know, they know better than the FAA. The FAA is not safe. And, and we can get into that sometime, but they're not safe, they don't know. The first, the first thing they should be doing, which they are not doing at all, as of today, there is no place in the country except maybe one university that the FAA has partnered with that, that is authorized to teach any kind of flight training for, for, for drones. When you, when you say authorized, what do you mean? I mean that if you want to fly a helicopter, okay, there is a whole process in the FAA with certified flight instructors, certified programs, that you go to that and, you're, and then you end up with the certification from the FAA it says you're good to go, you're safe in the, in the national airspace. They don't have any kind of training for drones authorized by the FAA. Well, that, that, no, no. The same no. distinction between, because they're training for full size, and we're just still talking 55 pounds and under. Yeah, well, this is, everything I'm talking about is under 55 pounds. We're not talking about more than 55 pounds. Um, that gets into a whole other thing. It's hard enough to understand under 55 pounds and over 55 pounds. We're talking unmanned aerial vehicles, systems that, um, that, are, that are controlled by the FAA. Let me, let me get, this is a, man, I don't have a lot of time. FAA breaks this down, this, this airspace stuff, into civil, Civil, so that's um, any convict or Harry or a corporation on the street, they're considered civil aircraft, okay? And they, have, they fall under the civil rules. Then the FAA does something that I think is stupid, but they go all the way back to England and the ships that went across the sea and the captains of those ships and they say, that commerce, he's responsible for his, his, his cargo, his crew, and his passengers, and we have to regulate him differently than <coughs> somebody that's out for a, a, an afternoon sale, just for fun. So they had strict regulations of, of commercial vehicles and the captains, and very little regulation of, of not. They break it down into two categories, commercial, and hobby recreation. That's civil now, okay? I'm only talking about civil so far. But think about it. 
there's nobody in the plane. There's there's no passengers. There's no crew. There's none of that. And you got the exact same phantom or whatever you want to use flying in the exact same location with the exact same pilot with the exact same camera doing all the exact same things. But we're going to regulate this guy who's going to sell his picture completely different than we're going to regulate this guy who's not going to sell his picture. So it's just taking it for itself. That's not going to fly in the long term. It just doesn't make any sense. And there's too many implications if you think it through. Okay? So civil. Next area is public. Public is any governmental, a truly governmental entity. Okay? They have a different set of roles. The civil is over here, hobby and commercial. Over here is um, government. If you're truly a governmental entity, then they treat you differently. You, and they give you more autonomy. In other words, today, the, the it's called the COA. If you are a government agency and you provide them with the proper paperwork, they're going to let you fly your drone, and you don't even have to have a man pilot. You, you can develop your own program, you can develop your own um, procedures, as long as, it, as long as it's decent, it's gonna get approved by the FAA. By the way, um, first, everybody hears about 323, that's the FAA under the civil, if you wanna fly commercially, you just did it, okay? Until September 2014, it came through, a bunch, of, a bunch of Hollywood people went to a top-notch law firm. They spent about a half a million dollars, according to them, to get permission to fly on Hollywood sets, take pictures of the joints. Um, they blazed the trail for first seven. Um, they only got permission for one drone on one Hollywood shoot. And they all ran back to the FAA as soon as, as soon as they got that approval and they started getting more approvals. And they've been chipping away at the FAA because the, the rules are very restrictive. For example, they can't fly them at night. Um, there's night scenes in movies and they want aerials. Not that cool. So they're trying real hard. They, they want to get rid of the pilots, they want to get rid of pilot requirement and all that kind of stuff. Am I too, everybody knows that there's a commercial, you have to get a per commercial approval from the FAA, and currently they require you to have a regular man pilot's license, and they know full well that those pilots of the 747s or the Cessnas or the helicopters know diddly squat about flying or building or batteries or any of that sort of thing. But they say, yeah, you go ahead. And the only training they require is 25 hours on the on on drones in general, 10 hours on the drone that you're going to use in the commercial in in, in the commercial uh, circumstances, and three takeoffs and three landings in the pre previous 90 days, every 90 days. And they require what they're trying to do is they're trying to put that little phantom into the aircraft pilots. And everybody in the country that really knows is saying, man, it's not the same. It's really different. And it's and you're restricting the ability of that thing to really be valuable to the scientists, for example. Unnecessarily. It can fly safe without being treated as a manned aircraft. If two American aircraft are within 500 feet of each other, that's a near miss. It's a major thing. People could die in the air and on the ground. If your phantom is 30 feet from another phantom, it really doesn't matter. The worst you're going to do, if you're, if you're not over the populated areas or any of that kind of stuff, is you're going to lose your phantom. 